The on-again, off-again romance between President Trump and Rosie O'Donnell took an expensive turn yesterday when she offered a pair of Republican senators $2 million apiece if they voted against the GOP tax bill. O'Donnell tweeted the offer to Susan Collins of Maine and Jeff Flake of Arizona. And although they both voted in favor of the bill, many were quick to point out that it's illegal to offer a lawmaker money in exchange for changing a vote. So is Twitter bribery the end of Rosie or the beginning of a whole new form of democracy? Party panel is back. Jessica Tarlov, Matt Welch, and Nan Hayworth. Uh, Matt, I'm going to start with you. Is this groundbreaking and creative or deplorable? It's, uh, it's beautiful. Um, I think the, the best response would be to actually pocket the bribe and then vote against her wishes anyways, just to do the old uh, Willie Brown in California kind of method uh, back uh, old school. Uh, it's, we talked about this earlier in the show. There's, there's a baked-in hyperbole right now in democratic discourse. It's, it's really the boy who cried wolf, the point of which story is not that there isn't a wolf, but that there is, yeah. that you need a good century to say, wolf! Uh, when one is coming, yeah. not when, you know, you modify the FCC's net neutrality rules. It doesn't mean people are going to die in the streets. When you do this to Obamacare, it doesn't mean millions are going to die. And this is, you know, Armageddon and Nancy Pelosi's words. These, the problem with this is that I'm going to need you people to be right criticizing Donald Trump yeah. next year when he does something truly awful and crazy, yeah. which he will because he's Donald Trump. But, you and know, it makes it really uh, difficult to their credit, Nancy Pelosi and, and Chuck Schumer do try to tamp down the impeachment rhetoric. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, every day there's a new Democrat that's like, nope, oh, nope, oh, that's it, collusion, impeachment. And they're like, hey, man, we, we have to wait for the real thing. Do you and secretly... Also, hey, man, we don't want Mike Pence. I mean, that's really what it's about. But to your point about hyperbole... Yeah, he's so squishy I, and, and snuggleable. I don't know. He and mother... <laughs> Everyone should read the Atlantic profile of Mike Pence by McKay Coppins. It is illuminating as and to his entire life. Li I know. And I actually read 75% of it, which I think is the most I've read of an article <laughs> in many years. Hyperbole front. Republicans, guilty too. Absolutely. We're going to turn into Venezuela if Bernie Sanders... You, you really need a special sort of set of circumstances to turn into Venezuela. So I think both sides are pretty Force crappy about this. redistribution at the hands of the government is a good start, though. When, when he started that's running, fine, I did start learning insane. Spanish just in case, actually. What's that? And when Bernie started running, I did start learning Spanish just so in do case. You, do you hope that Republican billionaires do the same thing with Democratic lawmakers? Uh, no, actually, I don't, Kennedy. Um, I mean, it's a I'm little bit more—it's sure. a little bit more honest of a transaction. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, and, said that, yes. instead of pretending that you know this lobbying is above board and I, everyone well, certifies themselves, yeah. that's how the disgusting, filthy system works. Well, so why not just be honest about uh, what we're doing with the money? I, I, I am all for transparency in campaign finance. I actually thought the Supreme Court made the right decision to allow uh, contributions to be more broadly made because it's all speech. That's what what it's all about. Uh, the best way to approach this challenge is actually to disempower the federal government progressively so that they are interfering less in our lives and we won't feel that we have to appeal to them yeah. for every single thing that happens in our lives. Rosie O'Donnell is crass and tasteless and has always been, and I don't think that's going to change. I wonder if they're going to investigate her. Ben Shapiro was uh, appealing to Jeff Sessions to Lock her up. Patrick Fry, uh, Paterico blogger, was a former prosecutor in uh, L.A., has a pretty convincing little tweet storm saying, eh, eh, no. Yeah, it's I not that enough. too. See, I think, I think you could argue it's entertainment, but I do yeah. think it's a more honest enterprise. And I think it would be very funny if you started seeing uh, lawmakers driving around in Bentleys. Because I might run for office. It's also honest, uh, Sarah Silverman, I think, and maybe Lena Dunham, or maybe I'm just starring her before the election. We're offering sexual services to people if they voted in a certain oh, way. And yet, that. nothing happened in that regard. One wonders why. Yeah, maybe it mm -hmm. did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. All right. It could be President Trump's favorite phrase. It's all fake news. It's phony stuff. It didn't happen. It's fake news. Fake news. <laughs> <laughs> fake news. <laughs> fake news. But Americans, they're not that crazy about the phrase. In a Marist poll asking people to name the most annoying word or phrase of 2017, fake news came in second. Whatever. <laughs> Tops the list for the ninth year in a row with 33%, followed by fake news at 23%. No offense. And literally came in fourth. Literally, you guys. Literally. Nan, what's your least favorite word? I really can't believe that. Well, you know, I... I, I could to... literally eat a house. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. Yeah, no, that's... <laughs>
<laughs> depends on the house. Uh, no, you know, I tried to get worked up about the whatever thing, but I don't know. I just couldn't manage it. It was just kind of like, well, whatever. Whatever. You know? Yeah, you yeah. know, it's. I, I still love Clueless. That's where it came from, and it's such a great word. It's, it's, that's, that's such revisionist history. I mean, the, the moon unit Zappa existed in a world before Clueless was a gleam in someone's eye. Oh, I mean, whatever. whatever. And absolutely, in Valley Girl, she's like, whatever. whatever. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that she codified Val speak. Thank you. You're absolutely right. Like, she wrote a she note did. to her dad yeah. and slipped it under a studio door and said, I want to write a song with you. Here's my song. And he's like, you know what? This is a great song. I played that for my nine-year-old recently saying, this is why you talk this way. Yeah. Uh, and the only word that didn't survive is uh, bitchin'. Bitchin' yeah. was all throughout that song. We don't say that anymore. No. Jessica, I don't even favorite? know if you can say it on TV. I you might have just so. gotten censored. Mm. Um, or fined. When I was reading that list, I was thinking to myself that my entire vocabulary that I use on television is contained in that list, and that's why people hate me so much on Twitter. <laughs> that's funny. So you could add vocal fry. Can I, can I add one no, more that's word? that's fake news, Jessica. Don't can I add one worry. more word? And this is because I have a middle schooler. Savage. Oh, oh, that's very new, though. Yeah, mom, that's savage. Yeah, but she's, she's using it so sarcastically. <laughs> if she thinks I'm dressed like a dork, she's like, savage. So that's the new <laughs> fierce. <laughs> yeah. If only I were the new fierce. Mm. I want to thank fierce you all for. But fierce is great. It's fierce is always. And fierce is not going away. No. Like fetch obviously didn't last. Oh, I know. I know. Fetch didn't even Stop make trying it. trying to make fetch, fetch work. Fetch happened. Yeah. Uh, oh, I, I want to thank you and and wish you the happiest of holidays. Yes.